What up everyone, it's your man Xman87 here bringing you another DC Multiverse video and what I have for you today is the DC Multiverse Titans Wave Build a Beast Boy series review. Before we get into everything, if you could please leave a thumbs up like rating on the video, it'll help show your support for my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Now with that said, let's kick things off with one of my favorite ladies of DC, Raven. Let's go! Rachel Roth, aka Raven, battles the forces of evil alongside her adoptive family, the Teen Titans, while trying to control her baser, antagonistic instincts she inherited from her demonic father, Trigon the Terrible. Alright, so we got Raven here, and I think this attire is based off her solo series when Marv Wolfman returned back in 2018, Daughter of Darkness, which, uh, that was a pretty good read. But I remember that attire being a little bit different from this. I mean, the belt and the medallion, the cape setup is kind of the same, but she didn't have bare hands. Um, she had more seams and stuff, but she had the red hair. So, I don't know. I have a lot of catching up to do for DC. So, this look probably came a little bit later down the line. But I just want to judge uh, and critique the figure as is. Taking a close look at the head sculpt, and I gotta say, for the most part, I like it. I mean, she looks demonic, and that's what I want to see in a raven. I do like that black cherry lipstick. It has a nice gloss to it. Uh, this one has the red hair, which I prefer raven with purple hair, but I think this version had a mixture of red and purple hair. I do like the eyes. I like the fact that he gave it eyeshadow, but here's the thing. The eyeshadow and the eyes are the same exact color. There's nothing to break up the contrast you know i feel like uh one of the two should have been a different color maybe a uh, purple eyeshadow and then the pink eyes but i do love the shape of the hood you get some nice shadows created around her face like that for example she's just gonna look good in a lot of angles for your photography or whatever you're trying to do yeah, it's a really nice sculpt and nice texturing too. And it continues for the rest of the cape. You get this medallion in the middle with some feathers there. And you get a lot of nice texture. Look at this cape. Look at the flow to it too. It's it's just spread out so nicely. It has a nice spread to it. It's very Raven-esque, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And the cape, unfortunately, is glued. It's not removable, so I want to get a custom feathered cape for her, and my friend Joy is going to work on that for me because she's obsessed with this character, and she wants to get that done. So uh, getting that feathered cape from her rebirth look, I believe, it would look really awesome. Here's her torso area, which she's got a really nice design there. I think Todd Scope did some nice bosoms for her. And uh, thin waist, I do like that. I like the belt and red and gold, you know. Uh, you get some black plain arms, but you get some texture and wrinkles there. You got the closed fist for her right hand and an open hand for her left hand. If there's anything Todd knows how to do on his female figures is making them look double cheeked up. So <laughs> good job, Todd, my man. And here are her legs, some seams right there. And they're all in blue, so it's a solid color. Now for accessories, she comes with swappable hands or more flame effects to replace her hands. And what the hell is this, man? I, I do not like this at all. Like, you can see the wrist peg right through the effect, and it's so thin. Her hand is shaped through this flame effect, which is pretty cool, but I still don't like the execution of this. The wrist pegs being visible just kills the visuals for me here. Azeroth Metrio Zintos! Going over articulation for Raven, her head moves about that far up, not that high, and about that far down, and then left right, you got some pivoting, could rock around a bit. Her arms move about that far up, so slightly higher than a straight T pose. Down, you could swing them around, the cape might get in the way to do that, but she's got butterfly joints that move that far forward and that far back, so not bad. And you got a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, great range. Uh, wrist swivel and the multi-directional wrist ball peg. She's got a double diaphragm joint, so she moves about that far down. That's a good ab crunch. Probably one of the best ab crunches in the wave. And she moves that far back, so that's some great range right there. And she swivels at the waist, swivels at the torso. She pivots on both areas. And you can rock them around. That's some great torso articulation for a female figure. 
I will praise the shit out of this. Then her legs can spread up about, the, yeah, they spread out that far, so full split. And then she kicks up about that high, that's real high, and kicks that far back. That's pretty awkward, but, you know, you get some great range with her, man. Uh, they uh, Legs can rock around a bit. She's got some decent thigh swivel, you know. McFarlane needs to improve with his thigh swivel. Sometimes they have great range, sometimes they don't. Um, and then you got the double jointed knees and heel to the raven butt. Hell yeah. And then her ankles move up that far. They move down that low. She has ankle swivel. She does have ankle pivot and you can bend the toe joint. I think I love almost everything about this figure. She sculpted beautifully and articulates with great range. The head is the only part limited. My only strong distaste is how the flame effects look on her wrists. Could have used more alt hands, especially for someone who uses a ton of hand gestures when using her telekinesis and mystical abilities. Maybe I'm biased because I love Raven, but this is already one of my top favorite female figures of the year. I'm going high with a 8.5 out of 10 rating. From one badass female to another badass female, we're gonna take a look at Donna Troy. First appearing as a Wonder Woman doppelganger, Donna Troy has become one of the most beloved characters in the DC Universe. Following the New 52 reboot, she is reimagined as the perfect Amazonian weapon born of clay to battle Wonder Woman for the throne of Themyscira. Okay, this head sculpt is freaking phenomenal. I don't care what anyone says. I don't see how anyone can hate on this head sculpt. Yo, Toddy Mac knows how to make those face sculpts look like they came out of a freaking comic book. This looks so freaking good. She just looks like an Amazon. It screams Amazon to me. I love her expression. She looks like she's about to freaking F you up, man. And the lipstick too has some nice shading. You can see some light red thrown in there. So that looks so good. I love the blue colored eyes. The only thing that's killing me is the neck flesh tone right here. It doesn't match the rest of her skin tone. So so yeah, that hurts it a bit. Doesn't take away from the face sculpt, but you know, does take away uh, from the figure a bit. But that hair sculpt looks absolutely gorgeous. It's nice and wavy and stringy. I love that kind of look for comic book hair sculpts. And the rest of her body, she's got these dinged up battle-worn shoulder pads so you can see some wear and tear to them and they're connected too you see this strap right there connecting the two shoulder pads i like her choke collar right there gray paint right there to highlight the textures uh nice costume man i, I do dig this armor she's got her armbands right there she's got her armored bracelets and as you can see she's got that wear and tear sculpting as you saw on her shoulder pads same with the belt but it's not painted that's the only gripe it sucks that it's not painted i feel like her choke collar and the shoulder pads they have this kind of pearly white paint applied to it but they didn't do it here or maybe i'm just missing it maybe a little bit on her belt but definitely not on her armored bracelets but i love the sculpting of the stars on the side so it goes from her rib down to her legs very classic donna troy ish you know to honor that classic look when she used to have uh the stars i loved her red and gold outfit i love classic teen titans man and it's nice texturing look at that Double cheeked up, <laughs> Toddy Mac coming through again, and then uh, yeah, there's some nice seam work on her legs. Gray painted knee pads right there, and then the boots. You get the stars sculpted with texture inside them, on top of the uh, wear and tear sculpting throughout the boot, like her arm. Is Dude, this is amazing, but damn man, it's not painted. The paint would have freaking brought that out. That's my one gripe about this figure is that it's not painted. This could have been a 10 out of 10 figure if it was painted. Damn, I don't know, man, but it seems like McFarlane's been slacking on the paint lately, too. Uh, and here are her heels, and she's not tough to stand either, which is nice. And the black pins kind of kill it for me. Should have went with, like, silver pins. And uh, if this was painted in silver, it just would have blended in. And for accessories, she only comes with this sword, and it's nicely sculpted, as you can see, the wear and tears, like her armor, and the strap handle, 
uh, only downside is it's not painted. And again, the paint is what sets this figure back from being a 10, in my honest opinion. And she only has the one open hand to hold the sword. It would have been nice if she had alt hands so that she can hold her sword two-handed. To cover articulation with Donna Troy, her head moves about that far up and that far down. It's kind of limited left, right. And it's always going to look on an angle because of the way the hair is sculpted. So uh, that's a bummer. Uh, she barely tilts. Her arms move about that far up, higher than a T-pose. And then... You can swing them around. She's got the butterfly joints, so they move about that far in, that far out. Not much. You got the bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, wrist swivel, and a multi directional wrist hinge. Double diaphragm joint, so she moves about that far forward and that far back. Uh, waist swivel and upper torso swivel. Pivots real good and rocks around legs can spread that far apart almost the full split i'd say and then she can kick up real high look at that and then she can kick about that far back so you'll get a nice frontward split with her decent thigh swivel moving inwards but not outwards at all double jointed knees and no heel to the wonder girl butt and then you have her ankles that move up that far down, they do swivel and they pivot. Has a weird pivoting motion. And you got the toe joint. Another one that's now one of my favorite female figures this year. She has such an amazing intricate sculpt from top to bottom, but the paint doesn't follow through all the way to highlight those attributes. That would have made her look divine as the goddess that she is. Still an amazing figure. The head sculpt and the body sculpt is what really does it for me with a decent blend of good articulation. Donna Troy gets a 9 out of 10. Now we'll take a look at Bloodhaven's own Nightwing. As the first Robin, Dick Grayson was the most famous sidekick in comic book history. As he ventured forth on his own, he formed the Teen Titans and became their leader. When the boy became a man, he became the independent hero known as Nightwing. Nightwing has a pretty damn good head sculpt here. Look at that cocky smirk. I like that. I really like the black tracing in between the lips. And as you can see, the nice stringy hair. He's got, you know, some blue shading in there as well. Wow, talk about applying uh, comic book techniques onto a figure in plastic form and making it translate so well. Not with just the hair and the lips, but the eyes too. They look really, really good with that nice blue domino mask. And overall, it's the this is the best thing about the figure, honestly, is the head scope because the rest is just utter caca. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this body scope for Nightwing at all. It's such a narrow chest. It's such a narrow torso. It's 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 ugly. I do not like it. I do love the blue paint applied. That's such that's so Nightwing blue right here that we're looking at, and it looks very good. But yeah, this is just not it for me. And these diapers are just haunting me, man. They're horrible. Man, McFarlane Toys got to do a better job with these damn diaper techniques because it's not good at all. It needs to be more pinched in. Uh, he did it right with Raven. I mean, as you can see, it's nice and tight. It needs to be pinched in and it needs to be tight. It shouldn't be flaring out like this. And his abs look like they're armored abs for some reason. If it's part of the suit, I do not know. There's some line work there. Uh, yeah, this is not doing it for me. I'm relying on Mofix for my definitive Nightwing figure. And uh, the rest of the figure is in all black. And he's got the pins, which you'll never hear me complain about pins on McFarlane Toys because at least he knows what kind of plastic to use. He doesn't use cheap plastic. It's not like uh, Hasbro that uses that gummy plastic. So yeah, if you give me cheap quality stuff, I'm going to call it out. But, you know, no warping here. You don't have to worry about it. Would be nice to see his take on Pinless, though, down the line whenever or if ever he decides to uh, delve into that. He's so old school minded and tradition and old fashioned. So I, I don't see him diving down that route. But again, he doesn't need to because he's using some good plastic. It's nice and sturdy. Uh, here's some nice line work around the ankles. So you get some... Uh, almost like ankle slash half shin guards and 
uh, that's it. He's got blue tracing around the soles, and that's okay. But that's it. No accessories, nothing. Not worth the purchase. He could have done so much better here for $24.99. Anyway, articulation for Nightwing. He looks about that far up, so he's got good range to look high. And he looks that far down, left, right, and he does have some nice pivoting, and it can rock around. His arms move higher than a straight T pose. You can move him down, swing him around. He's got uh, butterfly joints, and you got the bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, nice range, wrist swivel, wrist hinge. I cannot believe he doesn't come with his Escrima sticks. How? How is that even possible? <laughs> like, for Nightwing not including his most iconic weapon. And then a double diaphragm joint, and what is this? No. No diaphragm joint. Why have the two joints here if you're not going to make any use of it? He doesn't bend. For an acrobat, he needs to freaking bend like a contortionist. Like, come on, dude. And then he moves about that far back, which is fine. He pivots nicely side to side. Like, that kind of deep pivoting is what you should get in the ab crunch. You should just go deeper. Uh, so yeah, you got that and it rocks around, uh, full split that's needed for Nightwing. And then you have him kick high up, kick far back, and then you can, you have a thigh swivel. That's all you're going to get there. Double jointed knees. So heel to the Nightwing butt. He's got an ankle swivel. Ankles move that far up and they move that far down. They do pivot and you can even get a deeper pivot if you move the hinge off to the side and you can pretty much uh, just kind of swivel it and do something like this. So yeah, look at that deep pivot you can get there. And then you got the toe joint. I absolutely loathe this figure. There is nothing to rave about here. Like I mentioned earlier, just the head sculpt is the best thing, but it's not enough to save the figure. No accessories, no crunching range at the diaphragm. The body sculpt is atrocious. Nightwing gets a 2 out of 10. And the last figure we need to round out this bath is Arsenal. Green Arrow's first sidekick Speedy, and later Arsenal, and then Red Arrow, Roy Harper has grown to become one of the most accomplished marksmen and heroes in the DC Universe. Roy now goes by the name Arsenal once more. Here's looking at Arsenal, and the head sculpt is pretty good. I do like the baseball cap a lot. I like the hair sculpted through the cap. And you can see some of the hair going uh, over the cap right there too. So yeah, nice texture. Nice seam work right there. And then you got his uh, goggles or whatever. And there's some paint bleed right there on the nose I got going on. And that kind of sucks. He does look like he has a little bit of lipstick on though. Then you get that thin black tracing across the lips to break it up. And that's pretty good. There's his hair underneath the cap. And uh, you got his body mold right here, which is a nice sculpt. I mean, he looks lean and cut. He could have used more muscle definition in the arms for sure. But other than that, I really like the body work to this. And you get a nice mixture of wrinkles, seam work, texture, nice sculpting throughout. I like this that's going around his uh, shoulder pads, like those straps, which will uh, complement the quiver once it's plugged in there. So it looks like it holds everything together. I like the tattoo work. Poison? Like the band? <laughs> uh, and I guess it looks like a Cthulhu tattoo right there. So yeah, it's always cool seeing tattoos on figures. And then right here, I just don't like this tattoo. I mean, I like, uh, the design of it, I don't like how it breaks up right there at the bicep. That sucks because if you line it up, right, it's just going to look like his arm is sticking outward like that where it should be like this, more relaxed and vanilla. Yeah, that breaks it up for me. But I like his archer sleeves. You get nice seams across. Again, the sculpt work to this is just beautiful. And his belt... I do like that too. Again, I really like this build. Knee pads, pouches, and red, and his boots. Pretty good sculpted feet work right there. Now for accessories, he comes with a quiver, and you have a set of arrows, so you could just 
plug that in there and it rests nicely. It might wiggle a bit, but for now it's in place. Then you get his bow. You don't get an arrow, unfortunately, but man, this is a really bright bow and it does match the red on his costume. And the string right here is plastic, but it's pliable, so you can get him into a position where he is uh, about to shoot an arrow, which he does not have equipped. Doesn't make any sense. Actually, yeah, I have another complaint. They give him trigger hands. He should have proper archery hands, and it just looks weird. Articulation for Arsenal is same as Nightwing, basically. His head can move about that far up, uh, that far down, left, right. It does have a really good pivot. You can rock it around. His arms move that high up, down. You can swing him around. He's got the bicep swivel, double-jointed elbows. Wrist swivel, wrist hinge, double diaphragm joint that only moves that far forward. Again, it's really the same as Nightwing. This is terrible. How does he have terrible articulation going forward, but good articulation going back? And waist swivel, uh, torso swivel, upper torso swivel. You got the pivoting and it rocks around. His legs can make a full split. And he kicks really high up and he kicks about that far back thigh swivel goes in and out that much not too bad it's okay again he's uh mcfarland toys are hit and miss when it comes to the thigh swivel and you got double jointed knees no heel to the arsenal butt ankles move up that far down you got the ankle swivel you got the ankle pivot and the toe joint arsenal has some issues going on but i think he's pretty well put together Archer should always have archery-like hand gestures. Not having an arrow to pose with his bow takes away the purpose of his character. He also needed a better diaphragm joint. Arsenal will get a mediocre score with a 6 out of 10. And now on to the Build-A-Figure. Garfield Logan, aka Beast Boy, the classically green-skinned member of the Doom Patrol and later the Teen Titans, Beast Boy has the power to transform into any creature of any size. Alright, so when I first put this figure together, my first impression was a big holy shit. This guy is a beast. No pun intended, I swear. He really is a beast. This guy stands at about, let me see, nine and a half inches? Whoa, he's a big bath. Look at this head sculpt, man. I love this look. This dude looks like a really badass orc. <laughs> And uh, I like his facial hair there too. I, I do like uh, his tusks hanging out right there. That looks really, really good. Um, man, this is such a great head sculpt. The ears, the stringy like hair sculpt right there. That's a nice hairstyle. Man, just look how he's built. He looks like a monster superhero. He's just perfect. And the muscle definitions here, it's just, he's got this nice mass to him, this nice bulk. Uh, look at that chest, that Beast Boy chest. And then the fur bits right there on the shoulders, on the deltoids. Uh, you know, he's very buffed, man. Got some vein work there going on. I'm just freaking blown away by this. Nice paintwork right there. Uh, I like the way that the nails are painted on. So that's cool. It's more of a modern uh, Beast Boy. Of course, not his classic look, but dude, this is just so nicely proportioned. The diaper look is not too bad, but I really hope he finds a way, especially when it's just like a unitard like this. Like, I hope he finds a way to just smooth everything out because it's just, it would look so much better. This just makes it look like he has underwear over his tights. And these legs are nicely proportioned. I like the red trimming around the calves. Get more of that nice fur paint. The only thing that really pisses me off about this figure is they sculpted the fur on his feet. But they didn't paint it to go and match the rest of his body. And it sucks. I like that they painted his toenails. And uh, I am not feeling these black pins man what's going on with this i'm just not feeling that at all and that's it and man this is a beast of a bath and mcfarland has definitely improved over time with his build a figures i remember when i used to first get his build a figure lines uh you would have to heat them up and pop the joints this one i didn't have to heat up at all they popped in nicely and yo, this figure is the shit. I'm having so much fun posing him around. And I love that you could get this big guy into some pretty cool Beast Boy-like poses. 
All right, this figure here made my Nightwing purchase justifiable just so that I can complete this. <laughs> Let's go over articulation for Beast Boy. So his head looks about that far up. It's not really up. It's just straight. So he's limited in some areas, but not too bad. And he looks that far down, left, right. And it does tilt nicely. And you can rock that around. His arms move about that far up, which is very impressive for a figure of this size. And the sculpt higher than a straight T-pose. You can move it down, swing him around. And he's got this butterfly joint that moves that far forward and that far back. He does shift his arm down like he has a drop down arm, like almost import like. You see that? It shifts down. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Okay, Toddy Mac, I see you taking a page out of import books. And you got the uh, bicep swivel. It's kind of tough there. Single jointed elbows that give you more of a 90 degree bend. So that's awesome. Uh, wrist swivel, wrist hinge, double diaphragm joint, so he moves about that far forward, which is not too bad. Better than Arsenal and Nightwing. Is it me or like the females in the multiverse line have better diaphragm joints than the males? It all depends on uh, the figure, and it moves that far back. You got a waist swivel, and you get a upper torso swivel, and they pivot off to the side like that, and then, yeah, pretty good range and then you can rock it around his legs can spread about that far apart so not too bad and he can move his leg about that far up so that's pretty good the leg is not popping out on me none of the joints do and then he can kick about that far back then you got a thigh swivel which is not that good and uh double jointed knees and no heel to the beast butt you got his ankles that move up that far they move down and they do pivot nicely and you got the toe joint this is up there with one of the best bass under the mcfarland toys banner for the multiverse line he has the bulk he has the height he's mainly what you would want from a bath this is what a true bath is about i would love some accessories to go with him but overall he's a spectacular piece and if i had to make a top 10 action figure list for the first half of 2023 he would without a shadow of a doubt be on it i'm rating beast boy with an outstanding 9.5 out of 10. i don't have much for comparison so here is the titans next to their arch nemesis deathstroke and here is our beast boy build a figure next to the gold label classic beast boy and now to wrap things up, my final rating as a collective is a 7 out of 10. I did sell off majority of my McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, but they reeled me back in with this Titans wave because I'm a huge Teen Titans fan. I was done with the line, but I did say if they ever do a Teen Titans wave, that I'd cave in. That and Black is Night, nice, since that was one of the greatest comic book stories I've ever read of all time. Green Lantern is one of my all-time favorite heroes, so I may have to track some of those Lantern figures down. Not sure yet, maybe because I cherry-picked McFarlane toys. Anyways, it's not my classic Teen Titans, which I want more, but I am a Titans fan regardless, so I caved in and I'm pretty happy with these figures, besides this Nightwing. Another reason why I jumped on this is because we barely get Teen Titans done in figure form. I had all the DC UC ones from Mattel and that team looks so good all together because of the deep roster that line offered. I wish McFarlane would go that deep in those classic lores instead of modern ones. My favoritism aside for classics, this is a good wave of some modern titans. We get some unique sculpts which you can always count on McFarlane for that. But I wish to see more paint apps applied and more accessories for the $24.99 price tag. You either get the bare minimum or nothing at all. The one thing I will say that's good about McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse line is that he doesn't push the consumer and keeps bath waves down to four figures, which is fair and considerate to our wallets. Whereas Hasbro's Marvel Legends line pushes the consumer to purchase seven to eight figures to complete a bath. I love Raven and Donna Troy, Arsenal is okay, I hate this Nightwing and wished he was replaced by Starfire instead since we already had a few Nightwings in the line before. Beast Boy is the best bath I own so far this year and I'll most likely get the Cyborg bath just to have that character to go with this team. Even if it doesn't match this team specifically, I'll assemble my own version for fun. Moffix is my only hope to get the original versions of the classic Teen Titans, so for now, I'll take whatever Teen Titans McFarlane gives me. If you're a big Titans fan like me, then you'll enjoy this wave. Now we kick it back to you. What do you think of this Titans wave? What teams would you like to see next in the multiverse line? I would love to see more new gods and get the female furies. 
Comment below, let me know, we'll chat about it. That was my review, please follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, at xman87. Hit the notification bell so you always know when my latest videos are up. Share and subscribe if you're new. See you on the next review. Peace, peace.